Hi guys, Amy Pishna here with Valley Canyon Academy Spokane. Um, I want to show a video on how I evaluate what I perceive could be resource guarding in a dog. So we have Wolfie here, four month old Husky German Shepherd mix that was just adopted from the shelter. He's here for separation anxiety, crate anxiety issues, but we actually started to notice um, right away some potential resource guarding. So I'm gonna do kind of my full run of tests on him so you can see what is resource guarding, what is not resource guarding, and the different levels of it. Um, and just keep the camera on him. So the first thing that I'm going to evaluate is I'm gonna give him a higher value bone, like a bully stick, and I'm gonna see what he thinks about me taking it from him. All right, so first I'm just gonna present the bully stick. I wanna point out that he is back tied, so he is back tied so that I know exactly how far he can reach. I'm gonna present the bully stick, but it's gonna be just out of reach. I'm using just a check it to simulate a hand. You don't actually need to get one of those fake hands. So you can see how when this is in the way of the bone, he starts to push it out of the way. This is confrontational to him. So right away, you see how he's biting it. If this, were, if this were my hand, he'd be biting my hand right now. So because this is kind of messing with him when he's focused on the toy, he's irritated already. Sure, those are not hard bites. There's a difference between a soft bite and a hard bite, but he's biting this right now. Now let's get it so it's just out of reach and he's gonna get frustrated. He's gonna be frustrated because it's not right there. I'm gonna let him obsess over it for a second. He's gonna back off, that's good. But then I'm gonna come in and get in the way. Okay, he knows it's out of reach, he's smart. So I'm gonna let him actually have it. So now he's got it, he's got possession of it. I know again how far he can reach and I'm gonna come in and try to take it away from him. He's immediately removing it from me because he doesn't want me to take it. All of these would be bites, so he's being possessive of it by not letting me get to it. He's holding it to the ground and trying to remove it from me. When I try to actually get it, I can't get a good grip on it with this. But this is resource guarding. It's a lower level of resource guarding, but he is guarding this resource. He's not letting me have it. So right there was a bite. He bit at it. Another little bite right there. And now he's got possession of the resource and he knows it. So he's frustrated now that I'm trying to take it from him. Good, so he's not gonna let me have this resource at any point. Okay, so I'm gonna use this wood leaf to pull him back so I can get access to it. Because if I went in there to take it, he's gonna bite me over it. And he's not even invested in this yet. He doesn't actually care about this bully stick as much as he would care about it 10 minutes into chewing it. Once a dog has it in their grip and they're enjoying it and they're in the moment, they will guard it much more than when they're first presented. All right, so now we're gonna add a dog to the equation. There's the bully stick. So now, some dogs, there are some dogs who resource guard, you can turn it this way, there are some dogs who resource guard against people, and there are dogs who resource guard against dogs. Look at how much more intense he is already by adding a dog to the situation. He's not wagging his tail because he's happy, he's wagging his tail because he's getting ready for battle. Watch how intense he gets. Teeth, right? Four month old puppy. He's showing teeth. He keeps checking in at that resource. And as I use my Yeti around, when Yeti makes eye contact is where he starts to get aggressive. The teeth, the scrunched up nose. Now watch when Yeti is closer to the resource. Yeti's probably gonna let out a growl here because he's like, man, you're, this is inappropriate. But watch when he's even closer, when Yeti, or when Wolfie feels like it's his. Yeti doesn't even want to come closer because he's like, this puppy's about to bite me. This is resource guarding. He is guarding it against Yeti. If he had possession of this and Yeti were to approach him, he's going to go at him. Now, this is a puppy versus an adult. He probably wouldn't win, but in his mind, he's very serious about this. When the resource is out of, out of reach from him, Watch how he keeps track of both Yeti, guarding against the presence of Yeti in your butt. So right there, he doesn't even care anymore about that. He's still intent on getting to Yeti. That's a big red flag to me. Good, all right. Not good, but there you go. All right. So now we're gonna use 
another object, the food bowl. There are some dogs that will resource guard an empty food bowl, but we know that he was fed from the table, um, so he doesn't have necessarily that association. I could test it with no food in here, but I'm gonna skip to the chase and put food in there. We've got some of his kibble in here. We'll present the food and see what his level of guarding is on a, a uh, bone versus a dog with a bone versus a food bowl. So I'm gonna test to see if he's tense. If, you're, if the dog is zeroed in on something and you kind of like push him and he's almost stiff to where you could knock him over, he's already starting to get in that resource guarding zone. He's, he's feeling it. Stiff, right? I can't push him over. He's actually pushing against the There you go. He's like, it's mine. Now watch. He's eating his food. Because it's spread out right now, he's not going to guard. As, he's not going to bite my hand because he's so obsessed on getting it. If he were to finish this food and then I present the bowl, I mean, he, he got it, he won right there because he, he, he knocked it, so I had it just a hair too close. But if, if this bowl were full and I present it, and I stick my hand in, now my hand is a threat and he's gonna try to, A, he's gonna try to finish the food as fast as possible, a sign of resource guarding. He'll either slow down, speed up, he's choosing to speed up. Um, I'm keeping the, the chuck it in there as kind of an annoyance. As soon as he finishes the food or gets close to where he's gonna, he's gonna wanna go after it. So he's still focused on the food. Does this puppy resource guard? Yes. Is it extreme? In my opinion, for a four month old puppy, yes. I've seen worse, but it's definitely not good. Um, so this is a dog where at, at four months of age, I feel like puppies that resource guard, it's more of a genetic component that nature versus the nurture component of how they were raised. Um, so this is something where if you evaluate a puppy, you do need to look for this, especially if you have a home with other dogs and a home with other kids, um, because resource guarding is not acceptable. It can very quickly lead to bites um, and have the dog can end up being euthanized in the end. They definitely need rehab training. So. It is serious. It's serious in his mind, and that's why we take it seriously, because even though he's a puppy, and maybe his bite wouldn't hurt as much, he's going to be an 80-pound dog. And when that 80-pound dog doesn't let you take a bone away, doesn't let you take a toy away, doesn't let you drop treats and pick it up off the ground, it's a real problem. So, all right. That's it.